Hey, good day, it's Preso. Thanks for joining me in the workshop today. Now, as you can see, I've got the map of the world, so I promise. And I've been putting in pins here this morning. Let me give you a close-up look. Now, if you don't see your pin in the map, it's just that I haven't got to it yet. I've been going back through some of the old comments, trying to work out where people are. And it's been fun, actually, um, you know, trying to find the different locations on the map. Except for the UK, because it's so freaking small. <laughs> Uh, it won't be long before it's completely filled with pins. But if you want me to do that, if you want me to put your location on the map, just say, G'day, it's Fred from Whoop Whoop. Can you please put a pin in the map? And I'll try to do it. Now, uh, I'm getting on the Titan engine today. I did say I was going to work on the spray bar and the needle valve for the engine, but when I looked at what I needed, uh, I was short of an M4 metric fine tap and die. Now, uh, I set that as a requirement for those two parts. I didn't have those bits, so I sent away and ordered those. And while I'm waiting for them to arrive, I'm going to go ahead and start work on the display stand and the running stand, and also the fuel tank. Now, it's just a lot of woodworking and metalworking, so I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to do it and come along and watch. But for the last week, I've been working on another project. This was a, a queen-size bed head and bed frame. And uh, I didn't have enough timber, or you know, a decent quality timber anyway. But I did have an old wardrobe. I've broken that down, and I've sawn it up, and I've used the parts to make the bed head. That's uh, that project was sort of uh, next door and making a big mess. So I got that out of the way, and now we can get on with the Titan. So let's get busy.
these finger joints have got an insane amount of strength when you put them together and, and that's because of the amount of gluing area that you have with all of those surfaces. Now the downside is that they take a while to set up, although the jig that I use look very simple, getting it tapped in so that all of these uh, sockets and pins work out to be a, a neat fit is quite difficult. I made three test cuts before I got this one and on the others they were either way too tight or one was too loose and you don't have to adjust the jig very much it's like you know fractions of a millimeter and that will uh, change the the fit uh, what i'll do now is uh, glue this and uh, clamp it i've got some blocks here that i can use to put some clamping pressure on it um, and as you can see here i've got this one rogue um, bit of timber this is the side that i started on and it's good it's dead flush but you always get a you know a bit of a mismatch on the other side so once it's glued i'll trim this up and that will also mean that I'll need to change this corner radius here but that's easy enough to do later. Getting all the glue down inside these fingers is a bit of a challenge. I think in reality you don't need a lot. So what I need to do now is get a block under this end. So I've already cut some the right length. I put a G clamp on there, pull that down. I've another block that will go the other way and I'll do that separately. Once it's squeezed together it's not going to move and I'll just check it for square and leave it and it should be good. I think that's fully closed. I'll clean that excess glue off and look at the inside and if it's all good I'll just leave, leave it to set. I will check it for square though before I let that happen. Alright that's come up pretty good. Uh, it's fully closed on the inside and that means that on the outside it'll be the same. So I'll just put a square in here now and if that's all good we'll just let it set. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll let that set overnight.
Well, if you made it through this far, this is what it looks like. I'll bring you in for a closer look at the tank and the stand though. Let's a closer look at the display stand. I'm calling it a display stand so I won't run it on this. Uh, this is purely decorative and in the build notes it actually shows a drawing uh, with some dimensions and it's pretty much exactly what I've got there except I've used a different joint for the corner and I didn't bother about putting the brackets or the webs in the corners because it doesn't need it. That, that finger joint is very, very strong. Now this has had a couple of coats of shellac, uh, I'll finish this off with a single pack nitrocellulose lacquer and that will bring up the grain and make it look nice and make it more durable but I don't want to run the engine on this because it will get soaked in fuel. Uh, now as a display stand it's a bit useless really because as you probably guessed it's sort of completely overbalanced by the weight of the engine and when I finish this off completely I'll need to make some sort of a sub base out of something fairly heavy so I'll just sit on that but I wanted to use the design that was given in the build notes even though this is just a display stand. So let's have a close look at the fuel tank now because there's some bits on there you wouldn't have seen previously. So here's a close up view of the tank and you'll notice that I've held the tank on with wood screws and I've done the same with the engine. Now when I showed this previously some people got really upset and said you can't do that, you've got to have proper uh, model aircraft engine bolts and nylock nuts on the back there. And that's what it's going to be when it's finished. I've actually ordered the nylocks and I'm going to make some hex headed bolts to go through this uh, vertical part of the stand here. And uh, they are going to be single point threaded with proper hex heads and they're actually a replica of a real aircraft engine bolt. And we'll have a look at that later. But uh, yeah, just for the moment I've just temporarily put everything together with wood screws. Now there are some extra bits here which you can see and the tank is pretty much all aluminium except for this little dome nut on the back here and the copper fuel tube with the, the barb on the end which will take the fuel tubing. So um, you're probably looking at it and saying, yeah that's overdone. <laughs> but I wanted this to be a display model and uh, for that reason I wanted this to look engineered. I didn't want it to be just a plastic bottle or a tin tank or anything like that. So let's have a look at these extra fittings that you didn't see in the video. Just dismantle the tank here so you can see all the individual pieces. Now these parts here I didn't show on camera and that's because I thought they're pretty easy parts so just a lot of uh, repetitive turning and I thought oh nobody's interested in seeing that but as it turned out all of those parts there took over a day to make and one of the reasons was that uh, I hadn't designed any of them previously I just sort of made it up as I went along. And this little fitting here I think I went through about three different versions of that before I was happy with it. The little acorn nut there, I thought I had one of those, but it turned out I didn't, so I made that from a piece of brown bar stock. And the little fuel filler cap there, uh, once again, I sort of designed that as I went, so um, it just took a bit of time to sit down and think about how that was going to work. Now, as you can see, what happens here is the, the main body of the tank threads onto the back plate, and then there's a stud that passes down through the center of the tank body and that holds this uh, end cap in place. Now, you're probably saying, well, I don't know, that seems overly complicated for what it is, and you are right. Uh, what I plan to do here is I'm gonna JB weld the tank body onto that back flange and then powder coat all of those parts. And when you look at that and you say, well, why did you bother putting the thread on it then? Well, the reason was that I need to practice that method of machining away from the chuck using a hard stop on the lathe with the tool inverted. Now, I've seen it done before and I thought it was a process that's worth practicing. 
And in this case, um, I've, I've done it, but you're never going to see it. Once that uh, tank body is glued on there, who cares, really? It could have just been a push fit. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It was just one of those things. <laughs> Seemed like a good idea at the time. Now, the, uh, the actual fuel pickup is two pieces, and, or actually more than two, sorry. Uh, so we've got the copper tube, which has to be kinked slightly, so it'll miss this centre stud as it goes through the tank body. And for that reason, I needed to be able to loosen off the, the actual clamp that holds that copper pipe in place. So you can see how that's loose. There's an O-ring between these two hexes here. And when you clamp the top one down, it squishes the O-ring onto the copper pipe and holds it firmly. So what I can do is place the uh, bottom fitting through the side of the tank there. And when I rotate that, you can see how the copper tube moves inside there. And when you finally get that locked down, you can maneuver the copper tube to where you want it to go. So we needed to miss that centre stud. And then you just tighten the top fitting and that squishes the O-ring and holds it in place and makes it um, airtight and fuel tight. So the, the little aluminium stud goes down through the hole and then the end cap is just a pressed fit. Now that end cap, I want to be able to remove that at a later stage. You know, for some reason you want to clean the tank out or change the fuel or something. So that one will just have a bit of that RTV silicone around it and around the center hole there. And then the little nut holds all that down. So that end in particular, I want it to be able to remove. Now the fuel filler cap is just a plain uh, threaded bush. Oh, hang on, that's really tight. Yep, I need to clamp that somehow, but it uh, threads into the top of the tank there. And I've used a model engineer thread uh, because they are nice and fine and I had them and this will need to get sealed with something like silicon or thread tape or whatever come on there it is all right so that's the the finished tank and like I say this will get um, this will get powder coated I'll probably use something like a wrinkled black uh, or red <laughs> um, but that you know that's holding plenty of fuel for what I need it to do and uh, we'll see this reassembled at a later stage. Oh, and there's, uh, there's one more thing I want to show you. Now, I realized at the last video, I went to film both sides of the Venturi here, and I drilled that hole through, and remember, it was off center. And I said, I hope it's better on the other side. Well, that is the other side. So here's the side that you would have seen in the video, and it's actually worse than the other one. So the, the casting does have some irregularities in it, but I'm not too bothered. I think I can fix this. Um, I will probably end up CNC machining around that boss there. Now, I've done a drawing for the spray bar, and that's the next thing we're gonna do in the next video. We're gonna make that and the needle valve, and then the engine should at that point be in a condition where it will run. So um, before I wind up today, I'm gonna take you outside. If you heard a lot of uh, you know wind noise in the background in this video, it's because we've had about five days consistently high winds and uh, I'm talking like 50 60 kilometer an hour winds and it just hasn't let up <laughs> so it's been very noisy I'll take you outside and I'll show you what that looks like just thought I'd show you this before I sign off we've had 60 to 70 kilometer an hour winds here the last three days ah, it's distinctly unpleasant <laughs> especially with these really tall trees all around us and they shed uh, dead branches and if you're underneath at the time, well, you get skewered. Anyway, Prozo signing out. I'll catch you next time.